So to start off, can you introduce yourself and what you do? So my name is Anthony Cudahy. I'm a painter, um, mostly. Um, I also make a lot of zines. Um, I like printed matter. And I've been living in New York for 12 years now. Um, I live with my husband, Ian, who's a photographer, and our dog, Seneca. So in researching your work, I found that you oftentimes reference a point of inspiration for a lot of your paintings as like, image histories and that coming oftentimes from found imagery that really ranges from like family photography, film stills, queer archives, um, art history mm -hmm. and then we're so lucky to be in your space today but oftentimes those paintings inspired by the imagery are like individual figures or small groups that are in kind of more abstracted environments right. and I was wondering if you could speak more to the interpretation or translation process that happens when you paint? On a very like general basis, it's usually, in a, it's, it's almost always me finding um, the imagery that I work with. So whether that's like a photograph or like another painting from art history, um, there's, it's definitely the process of finding it. And then there's something that sparks like a color idea or Especially in photographs, I feel like it's not quite like the punctum, but it's, it's usually like a small detail or a lot of times it's like a figure that isn't the focal point. And then I feel like, and then I was doing these like, I started working with gay and lesbian like archives specifically, and I started noticing like obviously all these vigils that like span decades. And so I started painting those kind of, the idea was maybe they were all in the same night like they're mm -hmm. this part of this continuum. Um, but then that felt very dark, like really quickly. Like um, I didn't want to like only like mine these archives for like a vigil or like a morning. So I started to find like images of groups that they weren't necessarily like joyous, but they were, they weren't literally like a funeral. Since we're lucky enough to be in your space, is there a specific painting you'd like to talk about? Yeah, I feel like the one here Sorry. is like very relevant to, or like I feel like it could kind of give an idea of like how this like kind of collage archive process works. It was like my like challenge for the whole, this whole summer. Um, and it definitely was a learning experience where the narrative sort of eventually showed itself to me. So like even the rope wasn't initially in the painting and something about the poses of these two figures that are from like different archives um, uh, that I sort of pressed together um, suggested that kind of like rope and then trying to trust like my intuition where it's like this thinking about it as something that has no start or end like maybe they're engaged in this task sort of like in a purgatory state um, and I was speaking of like music before I was um, thinking a lot about that Panda Bear album, Person Pitch, which I randomly started listening to again. I was thinking about when you're listening to that album, a lot of times um, he'll like delete a layer of the sound and you didn't realize that you were like underwater until then. And then you can hear all these other things more clearly. And then all of a sudden there's like a static overlaid. Um, so I was trying to make a painting that had sections that were like different zones, kind of like that, that they almost had like a different sound or logic to them. And so there were a lot more zones when it first started. It was kind of like a diamond. And then I honed it in on this. They, they do take a lot longer now. And I feel like they are just by virtue of becoming more complex and, and trying to trust my intuition, but also trying to hone things down to like what's like necessary. Mm -hmm. um, How do you sort of like learn to trust your intuition when it comes to painting and this is a new process for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like a lot of times it's like physically leaving mm -hmm. the space. Um, sometimes I'll do something and I'm like, that's a little bit odd. And I don't, 
it's it's hard to like not you feel kind of like untethered when you don't have a specific you don't know the reason you did this mm -hmm. um and you have to just trust that there is a reason that you're going to figure out or it's going to lead to something uh so sometimes i just physically have to leave the studio and it'll be like a short day because i know that if i stay i'm going to like tinker with it or i'm going to make it into something that i know how to finish like mm -hmm. like you know i feel like everybody in their art practice has a way that they know how to make an image look good. Um, and then when you come back, you can kind of see it a little bit more, like a little bit more distance and see like if it was a good idea or not and if it makes sense. And sometimes things just don't make sense. And, and sometimes that's like interesting enough. So in past projects, you have referenced funerary imagery from the 1950s, um, imagery from gay and lesbian camp retreats from the 1970s, and then even recently, uh, apocalyptic tapestries from the 14th century. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of curious, like what's happening in this cultural moment or right now that affects what kind of research you're doing when you're looking into the past? I do think that like my work very like is on the edge of like being morbid, I feel like. Um, but it's, and I've thought a lot about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm just like intrinsically <laughs> drawn to that. But also when I look at, um, other work, especially like right now in this like big like figuration boom that mm -hmm. is happening, a lot of times I like see work and I'm like, where's like where's the death? Because I, I I feel like it's so involved with every part of every day in a way, um, like it's kind of mundane. But it's a lot of people like completely like put a sheen over it and separate it and. Um, so I'm like, I don't think I'm like trying to highlight it so much as like I'm not like censoring it or cutting it out. Do you feel like that in terms of like having kind of like, a, I don't want to say like a mundane addressing to death, but also just being like these references come with the fact that I'm acknowledging that I'm a human being with a corporal body. Like, do you mm -hmm. feel like sort of handling death as a theme and in your work is kind of always been there or it's like in the past couple of years? like from a very like personal vantage point, mm -hmm. it's like, I think I never had that like youthful period that people talk about where they thought they were like invincible. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I've always had like OCD, anxiety, and then specifically like health related. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's just been events in my life that like have made that very like clear how um, close those are and you know, it's like just something that everybody has to process yeah. and work through, but I just feel like it's just always been a part of the whole bundle for me of, of just like thinking and trying to exist. So even though you describe sort of your painting practice as being kind of solitary or like a little bit more confined in terms of like the mode of making, mm -hmm. I think one thing that has really um, endeared you to me is that I feel like you're a really active art citizen and you go out to a lot of shows and you're really supportive of your friends and peers. And I feel like you really like make an effort to be there in person when you can. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of feel like now more than ever, it's really important to show up for people. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could talk about what showing up sort of like means to you. I mean, it's kind of, I wish I could do more. <laughs> um, I always feel like I'm like, you know, not there enough. I, you, Cause it is like a genuine, like it's your friends making work that you, you respond to and you think is like important. It's like such a beautiful thing. It's like, I don't know, I guess that's kind of like what I meant when it's like, when I'm in here alone, it's like, those are kind of the things that I'm responding to. Mm -hmm. or like what my friends did. So it's like, it's, um, like I want to like be very supportive to my friends and in this like journey that they're on too because it's a, it's a it's a weird thing to be doing. At the end of every interview, we like to play a game called Fuck Mary Kill, mm -hmm. and you are welcome to interpret it however you see fit. Okay. So your people are so excited. Okay. Caravaggio, Nicole Eisenman, and John Singer Sargent. Oh wow. Hmm. You know, I feel like I would have to, okay, I'll have to marry Nicole, just because we can just like have a very supportive <laughs> partnership. 
Um, it, I feel like it would be a very, it obviously would be an open <laughs> relationship. Um, and then, wow. Um, I feel like I would have to kill Sergeant and fuck Caravaggio. Um, which sounds like the dangerous choice in that. But I do think Caravaggio is the one to fuck. Yeah, but I feel like it's like, you might get killed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it would definitely be like shrouded in secrecy and like mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of like going down a hallway with a candle, you know. <laughs>